My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. On today's show, we return to Sydney Dragway as we continue our coverage of the East Coast Thunder as part of round two of the 400 Thunder Drag Racing Series. And today we feature the factory hot rods of Pro Stock. Then we head to Wakefield Park Raceway on the outskirts of Goulburn for the final round of the High Tech Drift All-Star Series where there can only be one winner in the championship fight between Bo Yates and Michael Prosnick. This is Speed Week. The Tremain brothers of Aaron and Tyrone have been the dominant force in Australian pro stock over the last few seasons. They have swept all before them in one of the most competitive brackets in 400 Thunder drag racing and their onslaught doesn't look set to slow down anytime soon. Or will it? A brand new season means new opportunities for the rivals to hunt the brothers down. And it all starts right here at Sydney Dragway and the East Coast Thunder. Welcome to 400 Thunder Drag Racing. We're at Sydney Dragway for the East Coast Thunder. We'll be looking at pro stock today. So far at this event, we have seen upset after upset in top fuel, in pro slammer, in pro alcohol. Now it's the factory hot rods turn. The standouts, of course, have been the Tremaines, Aaron and Tyrone, finishing first and second in the championship last season. The guy that ended up third behind them was Jason Hedges. He's got no engine this weekend, so we've given him the microphone and he's down there with the defending champ. Thanks, boys. Well, I'm here in the Pro Stock Pits with Aaron Tremaine, multi and current reigning Pro Stock champion. And Aaron, I'd like to know what that championship moment felt like back at the Winter Nationals. Uh, it was pretty special uh, for both me and my brother as he came around um, for the, I think, for first round and he had the win. We knew he tied second up as well. So uh, that moment was pretty special, as you would have seen on the TV. Uh, we're pretty excited to both have, you know, both cars running in the mid-90s that, that weekend and to finish off the season one, two again was fantastic. And how was the off-season, Aaron? Uh, you have your own engine shop. Did you get a chance to do any testing or any R&D on the engines? Uh, well, we put a new clutch in my car um, and done one test day on it, but it was pretty hard to, um, Pretty hard to see what it was like because the track wasn't real good, but we're going to run it this weekend anyway. And I uh, just rebuilt my motor and I got done a couple of things to it, so it's a bit better again. So yeah, we should see how we go. Uh, we think we've all got pretty good power. Wayne's got really, really good power as well at the moment. So we'll just have to uh, wait and see, I suppose, what first round brings. The track's pretty greasy out there. Just had a look, but wait and see. Yeah, I was going to mention the track, the conditions, but you know. In these pro stock cars, we don't make power in this sort of air, but hey, everyone's in the same boat. So what sort of changes do we do to these cars to tame them down, to get them down the track the best you got? Well, basically what I try and do is just have a look at the track and then make, you know, clutch call, counterweight call, and, uh, you know, a little bit of weight, gear ratio, tyre pressure, shock settings, falling settings. It, you know, it sort of comes a bit down to everything, but you just got to try and make one run first, get it down and then see how aggressive the track actually is and then see, you know, if you're soft to start with, at least you know you can put more at it. If you come out too aggressive, shake the tyres, then you sort of, 
you've got to back pedal and then you're not really going to be any better by Q3. So I like to try and start soft and then ramp it up for Q3. You mentioned soft, but you rattled off about 10 or 15 tuning windows there. So as you know, these cars have got so many tuning opportunities. So can you ever get lost in these cars and do one thing and you don't know where you went with that? Yeah, you definitely can. you just got to try and make the right calls at the right time. Uh, if you don't, I suppose I try and not change too much at once. It's always been my, the way I sort of do it. Uh, you know, small changes make good gains. A lot of changes can make bad gains. So, Congratulations on the championship, mate. Good luck this weekend and go get them. Let's have a look at the recap of that championship last season. Aaron Tremaine finished off as our champion. Tyrone Tremaine in second place. Jason Hedges third and Wayne Daly fourth. Chris Aldardis. Jody Racco, Bruce Leak, Rick Chilton, Bill Kotsis and Scott Porter rounding out the top 10 for the Pro Stock Championship for the 400 Thunder Series. What you can always be confident of in Pro Stock is you're going to have a lot of tight racing because if you ever see more than a tenth of a second between the top qualifier and the eighth in one of these fields, it is an unusual event. We're going into qualifying session number one. Sydney Dragway, Friday afternoon. It is hot, hot, hot. We are talking mid-30s and up in the, uh, in the air, and the track temperature itself around 50 degrees centigrade. Man, that's what we had Aaron Tremaine talking about greasy conditions, and these are the most technical cars of the lot, Mark. That's it. It's all about the clutch management system for these guys here on this pass, uh, trying to get the uh, limited horsepower they've got in these conditions and get it down track here. Qualifying session number one. Rick Chilton up against Bill Perticaris. Chilton will go through first a 7196 against a 7197. I said they were always close. That's a thousandth of a second. Have a look at this. On the replay here, both cars got the wheels up slightly straight down the centre there for Rick Chilton. Bill Perticaris in the lane beside him right there. And it looks like he uh, might have buttoned off early. So you can see the shoots come out there. But uh, Peter Karras might have a little bit more in her. Right on board here, manually shifting the gears there for Rick Chilton. Grabs his hand up on the parachute, rolls it through for a 7.19 second pass. Now here comes Jody Racco in the Diamond T Custom Toolboxes car. Very Ooh. sideways in the burnout. This Monaro all the way across from Western Australia. Hey, Jody Racco does his own engine program as well on this car. So. The uh, Diamond T Custom Toolboxes, Jody Racco there, getting guided back. Creates all his own horsepower here for CNR Motorsport Developments. Now it's Bruce Lee can beside him. Bruce uh, runs out of Canberra, a former Australian champion in this category. So they are very, very keen to uh, regain some ground in pro stock. Racco in yellow. Bruce Leak for the Thuma and Leak pairing in the traditional blue. You can hear the revs building up on both cars. Bruce Leake heading for the finish line with a big advantage over Jody Racco. He'll run a 7.20 to 99 kilometres an hour. Racco, that car looked to be in trouble pretty early. Yeah, it looked like it bogged down slightly there on the start line. Let's have a look at the replay here. It's a bit hard to see from above. The car got out. You could see Bruce Leak was already pulling away by about 20, 30 metres off the start line there. You can see front on, Jody Racco. Yeah, it looks like you can see it got twitchy there. So uh, they'll go back. Have a look at the data. The, the data loggers on these cars, they, they uh, record about 30 to 40 different things on the car. There, So they'll go back, have a look at it, come back out for Q2. Well, here comes the first of the uh, Tremaine cars for Mega Bulk Fuels. It's Tyrone Tremaine in the Camaro. And in beside him, Wayne Daly, also for Diamond T Custom Toolboxes, but he is in this beautiful Dodge. Yeah, Wayne Daly, these guys, some new parts on board this weekend. Trying out some new shockies. Well, they start their burnout in third gear. Just give them a lot of revs, dump the clutch in third gear, punch fourth, go to fifth, and by that time, the rear wheels are doing, well, you know, a lazy 300 kilometres an hour. And the thing is, with the burnout, you've seen those guys there in Tremaine's car adjusting the wheelie bars is. So what happens in the burnout, obviously they spin, create heat inside the tyre, the air gets hot and changes the tyre pressure, which changes the actual way the car's sitting and can actually increase the height of the car slightly. So the guys check the wheelie bars, make sure they're at the height that they want for the pass, 
and then they, they send them forward. So that's why you see those guys adjusting it. And the, if the, the drivers can keep their burnouts consistent, it makes it easier for them anyway when they do those adjustments. Yeah, Wayne Daly's had one of the fastest cars around the place. And on the dyno, it shows it has extremely good horsepower. So much so that, I um, mean, the Tremaines do the dyno work on this engine and they know exactly what it's got. So whenever you, you hear Aaron Tremaine talk about threats, he always mentions Wayne Daly because he knows how much horsepower is under the bonnet of that uh, Diamond T Custom Toolboxes Dodge. And they won't tell you exactly how much either, but I'm hearing it's like up over 1,100 horsepower pushing towards 1,200. Daly came out with a very early red light and he's going to run a 7.37 but a 7.09 for Tyrone Tremaine in this heat that's a very good pass. That's a great pass he, uh, he obviously had the set up pretty well there for Tremaine. He goes to number one we look at uh, Daly they had some issues here let's have a look at the start line he had a red light so that's why he was well in front you can see the car just uh, twitching around there so they'll go back and they'll have a look at some changes there in the rear end I'm guessing well, yeah, normally it's one of the fastest cars off the start line of them all, but right there, pretty slow in the figures. Yeah, it was only 106 to the 60 foot, definitely room for improvement. Chris Soldatis on screen coming forward now. And he's going to be taking on the reigning champion in this uh, first session of qualifying. It is Aaron Tremaine for Mega Bulk Fuels. Chris Soldatis running for Dingay Smash Repairs down in Victoria. And the guy crew chiefing that car, we just saw a glimpse of him on screen there, Peter Ridgway, multi-time Australian Pro Stock champion, first Pro Stock driver in Australia to run a seven second pass. And then fast forward quite a few years, he was also the first in Australia to run a six second pass. So there's a bit of pedigree on the team over there for Soldatus. And uh, he'll be taking it to Aaron Tremaine, this team, uh, this weekend here in Pro Stock. Now Aaron Tremaine, he lives and breathes Pro Stock. Yeah, that's what he does each and every day in between meets is work on these engines so he's always looking for that one horsepower advantage that two horsepower advantage where how can we get this car off the line smoother quicker that's what he does for a living well he's got a target here because his brother has run 7.093 if either of these drivers want to take the uh, provisional pole after the first qualifying session that's the target they have to beat, 7.093 seconds. And I'd have to say that either of these cars is capable, but these hot conditions, there is not as much oxygen in the air that robs the engines of horsepower. The cars are side by side here. Oh, have a look at that. 7.09 for Aaron Tremaine, but Chris Soldatis, he goes to number one with a 7.08 at 312 kilometers per hour. Have a look at this on the start line. A little hole shot. Better reaction time advantage for Aaron Tremaine in the Mega Bulk Fuels car. Saw him out in front. I think he actually got to the line first, but the quicker time was with Soldatis. Oh, they're laying down the smack there in the first qualifying session. Chris Soldatis, he's our number one qualifier. Tyrone Tremaine, number two with the 709. Aaron Tremaine with the 709. Rick Chilton in fourth with that 719. Bill Petakaris, fifth. Bruce Leak in sixth. Wayne Daly, seventh. And running out in the top eight at the moment, Jody Racco with that 752. So many of those positions just decided by a thousandth of a second. That's what we love about Pro Stock. Qualifying two now. Here is Bruce Leake, and he is coming up against that man from the West, Jody Racco. Well, now that we're in qualifying session two, Rob, the conditions have cooled down slightly. It's still pretty warm, but definitely for pro stock, you don't have those those uh, superchargers on top of turbochargers, nitrous helping them out. Uh, any sort of uh, cooling down will help these engines immensely. Yeah, it certainly comes down the amount of oxygen in the air determines how much fuel you can put in the engine and burn. If you don't lean it out when you haven't got as much oxygen, you're not going to make as much horsepower as is possible. Now, Jody Racco, he's got some ground to make up after his uh, first qualifying session. Bruce Leake, he is just looking to keep edging forward. He ran a 7.20 in that first qualifying session, so I'm sure these are these, uh, both drivers here will want to try and get to the low seven once maybe dip into the seven o's like we've seen from the tremaines and the soldatus there in that first qualifying session which i think can happen it is an eight car field if you want lane choice in the first round of racing you need to be in the top half of the field 
So these guys will be keeping an eye on that. Both cars look steady this time. They won't get into the O's, but it's 7-1-1 to a 7-1-4. Rucco with the advantage. Yeah, big improvements both sides of the racetrack there. It's a combination of things here. The conditions are a little bit better. They've learned a little bit off that first qualifying session, so we're going to see improvements. Uh, it's interesting to see what happens with the cars after this pairing, but have a look at this. Both cars straight down the groove. They're going to be happy with that. Have a look at this. Bill Perter car is backing up after his burnout. You can see the gear shift there for the Liberty 5-speed transmission. The driver's really well protected in a uh, extensive roll cage in these cars, Mark. Yeah, the, the, the roll cage there obviously is the safety feature for these cars, especially pro stock. They haven't got much downforce at all, so you need all that sort of protection around the driver. We see Wayne Daly's crew here guiding his car back. You can see the rear wing there of Wayne Daly's car. It's got what they call little scallops there in the back of it. They're there designed to break the wind up from underneath the car so the rear wing only works one way. So the downforce from that rear wing is pushing down on the rear slicks and not being pushed up from any air coming from underneath the car. So it prevents any chance of lift. Well, there's a Brett Riley, the crew chief for Wayne Daly's Diamond T Custom Toolboxes car. He's guiding him in, as is the Perticaris crew. Car held in first gear. These guys shift into second gear under a second after leaving the line. They are launched at about 6,500 RPM. Always sounds a lot more than that once they get them up onto the rev limiter. Perticaris is going to get their first on the hole shot with a 7-1-1. Wayne Daly goes 707, so it's starting to show uh, what it can do, Mark. Yeah, that puts him to number one qualifier here at the moment in Q2. Look at the replay there, both cars. It still wasn't a perfect launch for Daly, but they're in the right path there with the new setup in the back of that car. Perticaris, though, that's a good run as well. 7-1-1. He goes into the top half of the field. That's a really good point you made, though, because Wayne Daly's car has always been the quickest 60-foot timing pro stock around, and he's gone to these new shockies, and it's now the slowest in the field. Well, so to shows the horsepower he's got at the other end. That's it. To put in perspective, he was still a couple hundred slower than Peter Carras in the 60-foot on that run. Next pairing up, though, Rick Chilton on screen. Take on Chris Soldatus. Well, Soldatus was our number one qualifier after the uh, first session. That's been taken off him at the moment by Wayne Daly. What can he do with a tin gay smash repairs car to uh, try and take it back? We've seen a lot of uh, improvements from the Pro Stock teams here. You can see the wheelie bars getting adjusted here after the burnout. Not only, well, I was talking earlier about the uh, burnout procedure, but the wheelie bars get taken off after every single pass by the Pro Stock cars. So when they get put back on the car as well, sometimes the adjustment's still not perfect. So they uh, get on track, make sure it's absolutely spot on to the millimeter as they go into pre-stage because it's all about that wheel speed and making sure everything's absolutely perfect and working together. Well, there was that man I was talking about earlier, Peter Ridgway guiding in Soldatus. Rick Chilton, he's ready to move into stage. 7.07, that is the time to beat if one of these guys wants to go to that number one spot. Now, Rick Chilton was originally crew chief for Bruce Leake and decided he'd go racing himself. And Soldatus really jumped into stage there. And he goes uh, 772 for Soldatus and a 712 for Rick Chilton. He improves by Soldatus. The uh, replay here, can't see it from that shot, but he really got into stage, jumped into stage, shortened his rollout a little bit here. Rick Chilton, though, that was a good pass from that team. So that won't be any improvement for uh, Soldatus, that is for sure. So that's going to keep things wide open in qualifying. That it does. Wayne Daly still our number one qualifier at the moment with that 7.07, but it's the uh, championship team on the start line now. Aaron Tremaine to take on Tyrone Tremaine on screen for Mega Bulk Fuels. At the moment, Tyrone is ahead of Aaron by just a couple of thousandths of a second. You can see that electronic dash inside uh, Aaron's car there, the uh, the idle. So the, it was idling about 2,000 RPM there in that uh, small block pro stocker. The Tremaniac team, they run next-gen engineering up in Brisbane. 
dyno rooms, they've got the CNC's, they produce so much of their own gear and as you said earlier, he just eat, breathes, sleeps. Pro Stock Illuminator. Now Can he jump ahead of his brother? Yeah, well we heard earlier from uh, Aaron that he likes to go soft in that first pass and then improve at each session. Well, Tyrone's got a problem off the start line. It will be Aaron across the line first. Run 701, 314 kilometres an hour. Oh. Where'd that come from? Wow, six hundreds on the field at the moment there. 701 from our championship uh, contender there, Aaron Tremaine. Tyrone with dramas, but Aaron Tremaine, he goes to number one. I didn't think we'd have a chance of I seeing a six-second pass I, I, in these conditions, but that was so close. Aaron Tremaine heads qualifying with that 701 from Chris Soldatus 05, Daly 07, Tremaine 09, and then we get into the ones with Perticaris, Racco, Chilton, and Leek. That is going to be a tough eight-car field in pro stock. With only 13 hundredths of a second, separating our qualifiers here from one to eight. I can't wait for round one of racing. Stay here with us. We'll be back shortly. 400 Thunder Pro Stock. So, I thought I'd have the chance to show you what we do in these Pro Stock cars, and I'm pretty familiar with this situation, but we're down here with Tyrone Tremaine's Pro Stock car, and I thought I'd take you through how we bring these cars into stage, and how we actually leave and complete a run. So the first thing we do, this is a manually shifted car, so we're on the clutch. So we'll slip the clutch in to bring the first bulb on of the Christmas tree. So as soon as that first bulb's in, we're in free stage. Then, we'll pump the brake, we'll bring up about a thousand pounds of brake pressure, each drive is different. And this little green button on the steering wheel then holds the car. It's holding the brakes for us. So then we'll grab the accelerator. We're in first gear, mind you. Clutch is on the floor. We'll bring the revs up a little bit and start slipping the clutch in to get that second bulb on. Now, we can't go too far. We can't go too little. We've got to keep the revs right and slip it in. And the minute that that bulb comes on, we're in full stage. Then we're just focusing on that tree. As soon as those ambers flash, we're out of there. And when I mean we're out of there, clutch off, brake off. Bang, gone. 0.9 of a second, we're looking at the shift light. One, there comes second gear. Two, there comes third gear. Three, there comes fourth. Then bang it into fifth. All this time, not even at half track yet. Absolutely flat to the wood. Then the hand goes from the shifter straight to the chute. Then we're looking, 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 looking. And then before we get to the traps, bang, shoots come out under full power. Bang, hit the clutch, get it out of gear. Then start riding those brakes for that bouncy ride to pull this thing up at about hopefully 200 mile an hour. Well, we know Jason would have rather been racing this weekend, but that's a great insight into what it takes to stage and launch one of these cars and run them down the quarter mile. We've been looking forward to a fantastic eight-car field in this first round of eliminations, but unfortunately some news from the pits. Not going to work out that way. Jason's down there with Donna McLean from the Don Rick Motorsport team. Yeah, thanks guys. I'm down here with Donna from Don Rick Motorsport in the Pro Stock Picks and unfortunately it's not the weekend they were looking for. You've been here since Wednesday testing. Can you let us know what exactly happened please Donna? Well we had a second run yesterday in our qualifier and we um, looked like a good run. We went down straight, came back and he's done some inner damage. We dropped it, dropped, took the rock covers off, push rod was in the wrong position, that rocker thing was off and we think we dropped a lifter so get it home we'll have a look and see what the damage is, see what the car energy is and come back again. And unfortunately with these high revving small blocks, parts do fail and um, but I'm sure you'll be back, yeah? You, you're long time campaigners, we'd love to see you back at Sydney. Yep, slow learners, we're here. <laughs> Thank you very much Donna, back to you guys.
There is no question, Pro Stock is addictive. They will be back. So Aaron Tremaine will now get a solo pass in round one. Tyrone Tremaine will take on Bill Perticaris. Chris Soldatis will now take on Bruce Leake. And Wayne Daly to face his teammate, Jody Rucco, again. Now there's some games going on down here in Pro Stock because we just had a lane switch. Uh, Tyrone Tremaine has lane choice in this first round of racing. He was originally lined up in the rocket lane. He's now switched across to the Aeroflow lane. He gets lane choice. Here's the quicker car coming into eliminations. Is it going to make a difference? We'll find out shortly. Find out we will as they both do high revving burnouts. You're riding on board with uh, Tyrone Tremaine. Lane choice in Sydney is not normally that big a deal, Mark. No, not at all. It could be some mind games. It wouldn't be pro stock without some mind games at all. Uh, they, they, there's usually varying factors why someone may change lanes. It could have been he might have seen something in advantage in this lane, possibly, as I said, we mentioned the mind games. Um, Sometimes maybe a car may have uh, left something on track previously and they think, well, you know what, the lane's just been clean, let's go into that lane. But, yeah, there's there's usually varying factors anyway to that lane choice. And quite often these drivers have a, a preferred lane based on how well they can see the Christmas tree because they are trying to stare over this huge bonnet scoop and uh, that's sucking in all that fresh air into the carburetors. These pro stock cars, they don't have any superchargers, they don't have fuel injection, they don't have nitrous oxide, they certainly don't have turbos. It's just two four-barrel carburetors feeding a 400 cubic inch V8 engine producing, well, up near 1,200 horsepower. Shots here of Bill Petacaris edging forward, those big rear slicks, about 34 inches in diameter. He's jumped into stage here, waiting on Tyrone Tremaine now to edge forward. Tyrone with a big hole shot. You can't give away those sort of hole shots in pro stock. Tyrone Tremaine, he goes through to the semi-finals. He runs a 7.01, 314 kilometers per hour. Bill Petrokaras goes 7.12, 306 kilometers per hour. But Tyrone Tremaine, 7.01, that's almost low ET of the event so far. He is a thousandth off what his brother ran in qualifying. Those two are going to duke it out, I think. Hey, that was, that was a great run. Look at the replay here. You can see Petacaris was out of the groove slightly, but Tyrone Tremaine was perfect through the middle. On board shot here. Watch him shifts into second, into third, into fourth, into top gear at four seconds into the run. Hands on the parachute, pulls the chute, and brings it to a slow from almost 200 mile an hour. So we have now seen Tyrone Tremaine go through to the second round. Jody Racco burns out in the Diamond T Custom Toolboxes Monaro. And in beside him, doing likewise, is Wayne Daly in the Diamond T Custom Toolboxes Dodge. Now this is a rematch of the last Pro Stock event we had at the end of the season for the 400 Thunder season. Wayne Daly took on Jody Racco at the uh, Gulf Western or Winter Nationals. The victor that time, Jody Racco. Yeah, this car that Jody is driving is the ex-Wayne Daly car. Like, Wayne Wayne did uh, had that Monaro, ran it in pro stock under the Diamond T colours. When uh, he decided to go Dodge, put it on the market, Jody bought the car, and uh, Wayne got on with him really well and said, well, listen, uh, how about a little bit of sponsorship and we'll leave the colours on. And now they run this two-car team, one with a Chevy-powered Holden, the other one with a Mopar-powered Dodge. Uh, but it's just been working really well for him. That has. Have a look at all the crew members on the start line there for Wayne Daly. There's about six of them there, all with a role to play for a seven-second pass. Six crew members. Uh, you know, the hours that the crew spend in between events is astronomical as well. So Wayne Daly, the higher qualifier here, he's uh, really shown the potential with that 7.07 in qualifying. Didn't work out for him at the Winter Nationals. Let's see what happens now with the teammates. Araco oh, goes two and zip. He's beat the boss twice in a row now. A 7-1-1 daily with trouble off the line. Only runs an 863. Didn't see that coming, Mark. Yeah, have a look at the replay here, Rob. You can see Daly's car. They've missed the clutch setup on the car. It got into a bit of shake. It spun the tyres. It stepped out on him there. We're on board here with Jody Racco in the lane beside him. It was a really good pass for the team. He hit his shift points pretty much spot on across the finish line. He goes through to the semi-finals. 
let's throw down to Jason. Thanks, guys. I've got Tyrone Tremaine here. Tyrone, you got the round win. You went 7 0 1. Yeah, no, that's awesome, mate. It's good to get this mega bulk fuels car through another round, and that's a pretty good number in this heat, so we'll see what the rest of them can do, but bring it on. Congratulations, mate. Good luck in the next round. They're coming thick and fast in round one of Pro Stock Eliminator. It's 400 Thunder Championship Drag Racing. Round one of the Pro Stock Australian Championship. Here is Chris Soldatis for Tingay Smash Repairs, racing out of Victoria. And he is beside Canberra's Bruce Leak uh, in the Thuma and Leak car. Soldatis really showed some form in qualifying, Mark. Yeah, that he did. The one thing that noticed uh, that I noticed with Soldatis in qualifying was probably uh, his staging routine was a little bit clunky. Uh, his reaction times were a little bit slow, so he's definitely got some room to improve there. But performance-wise, these guys have got some serious horsepower on board with Ridgeway performance there. Bruce Leak. I think if uh, Bruce Lee can grab a bit of a hole shot here, he could get an upset win. Well, we've seen upsets all weekend. I'd never rule any out. Bruce Leak, I mentioned earlier, a former Australian champion in this category. Very experienced. Chris Soldatis, he just doesn't get a, a lot of uh, racing, and in particular, there's just no testing opportunities for the Victorians. So it does take them a while to get back in the rhythm. It's all about that race craft with Pro Stock. Both cars in pre-stage. Revs come up on the limiters. Whole shot to Bruce Leak. Oh, is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Soldatus it is. 7.03. 313 kilometres an hour. Beats a 7.26 of Bruce Leak's. It will be Chris Soldatus going through to the semi-final. Look at the replay here, he was a big hole shot for Leek over a tenth of a second, but uh, I'm not too sure what happened, he was ran a little bit off his qualifying time, but Chris Aldatis through to the semi-finals. Jason down at the bottom end with Jody Racco, a round one winner. We got Jody Rocco again, another round win, and you're going to the next round, mate. How was that? Oh, listen, the car was uh, fantastic, actually. We threw another four-link setting at it. Um, it's been hooked up all weekend, so uh, to get down here, uh, once again, thanks to Wayne, um, fantastic competitor, and for us to come out and have a win, mate, I can tell you I'm beside myself, so. Good luck, and good luck next round, mate. Well done. Jody looks very comfortable in front of the camera. Must be picking up some technique tips from his sister, Nikki, who's an on-air presenter. Yeah, he looked pretty polished there on camera. Next up, we've got Aaron Tremaine on a solo pass here in round one. We've got a little chance here to catch up with Jason, though, down in the braking area. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with Chris Soldados. And, um, Chris, you got the win. You're going another round, mate. How'd that feel? Yeah, it felt all right. I mean, it's, 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 we're starting to go all right, eh? I think we're starting to show a bit of power. I've just got to learn how to drive it, and um, we're sort of getting there. We'll be right, eh? Mate, you know how to drive these things. Good luck in round two. Well, Aaron Tremaine, he'll be looking for low ET of the round right here. He wants to maintain that lane choice going into the semi-finals. He will be going to that semi-final, but it's a matter of just how quick he can run here, how much data he can pick up. Well, we've seen his brother run that 7.01 here early in round one of racing. Potentially, do you think we could see Aaron Tremaine run that first six-second pass for the weekend? I think the conditions could be here for it. Well, they've run 701. There's only that little, little margin of 100 to get into the six second zone and it launch nice. How about another 701? He's a few thousands quicker than his brother. He gets the low ET bonus points back off of him at the moment. Have a look at the replay here for Aaron Jermaine. What a great round one solo pass here. Shift through those gears. They, they shift at about 10,200 RPM on those shift points. Goes through across the finish line about 10,600 RPM. He gets the win. Well, this is the way they're going to line up in the semi-finals. Aaron Tremaine to take on his brother Tyrone. Chris Soldatis to take on Jody the Giant Killer Racco. Man, the brothers are going to be doing battle. Soldatis and Racco, that's going to be tough. Pro stock, it is always on. I can't wait for those semi-final matchups, Rob. Don't go too far away. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Sydney Dragway. We're at the East Coast Thunder. It's 400 Thunder Championship Drag Racing. Pro Stock Semi-Final coming our way. We've already had upsets in this category, just like all the others. Are they going to continue? We're going to find out. First pairing up here in the semi-finals, it'll be Jody Racco to take on Chris Soldatis. Now Racco put away his teammate, Wayne Daly, in round one. Chris Soldatis, he was the quickest car in the first qualifying session. And he has still stayed up there in the number two spot. Has he got enough to stay in front of Jody Racco, who's been cutting down the tree? His reaction times have been great. Well, that's the thing at the moment. I, I, when you look at this race from a, from a racer's perspective, you look at the reaction times and the performance that these cars have been doing. Racco definitely hitting the tree, cutting the tree. Soldatus, not so much, but performance-wise, you'd put it over Soldatus's lane. So they're sort of cancelling each other out at the moment. It's either which driver can improve the most here. Can, can, can Soldatus improve on his reaction time, or can Racco improve on his ET? Well, they've been working on that car. There's no question about that. The Diamond T Custom Toolboxes team and uh, squeezing every little performance they can out of it. Likewise, Peter Ridgeway's been uh, pouring over the data, making fine adjustments to the Tingay Smash Repairs car. This should be a great race for a spot in the final of Pro Stock. We'll find out who the winner's going to be in about seven seconds' time because both cars are edging forward to that stage beam. It's now in the driver's hands. Racco with the whole shot again. Look at the horsepower of Soldatus though, a big top end charge, five kilometers an hour faster, he gets it. A 7.03 squeaks there in front of Jody Racco's 7.10. Well, absolutely nothing in it. Soldatus goes through the final, we're on board with Jody Racco. He was so close to getting that win. And you can see the front end bouncing here in the braking area as well. Oh wow, what a race in pro stock in that first semi-final matchup. Have a look at the start line advantage there as Racco was lightning on the uh, reaction times. And then disappointment. The crew don't jump because he's just been beaten by a couple of thousandths of a second by Chris Soldatus who's headed to the final and down with Jason Hedges. Yes, mate, I'm down here with a very relaxed Chris Soldatos. Chris, you're going to the final of the East Coast Thunder. How does that make you feel? Yeah, it makes me feel fairly happy. Actually, I'm a bit excited. Actually, we'll be, uh, we'll see what we do. We'll see what the big fella says. He throws the shots on the monkey. I just shoot. Here comes the Tremaine sibling shootout. Aaron Tremaine in the white mega bulk fuels uh, Pontiac up against Tyrone Tremaine in the black Mega Bolt Fuels Camaro. Well, the, the uh, Pro Stock teams that uh, raced together this weekend haven't really planned it out that well. We had Racco and Daly race each other first round. The Tremaines have got each other in semi-finals. That's not how it's meant to pan out. You want to try and race each other in the final, not before that. Well, this is for the opportunity to lead uh, into the semi and maybe take away the points lead in the Australian Pro Stock Championship. Aaron Tremaine is that defending title holder in the white Pontiac. You have a look at their father, he quite often stands on the centre line. He doesn't want to be seen to be favouring one side or the other. Kerry Tremaine, the patriarch of this uh, racing lineage. See the big rear slicks there. And if you look above the rear slicks, the rear wing on the Pro Stock cars, they actually run them at zero degrees. They can adjust them if they want to, but uh, it takes away a little bit of the top end speed. So they pretty much run them dead flat across the back. Always a trade off between downforce and drag. You get more downforce, you get drag resistance, it slows you down. These guys want enough downforce, but no more than that. These brothers, they race head to head as hard as you'll ever get. Normally there's only a thousand or two between them. Not this time. Aaron Tremaine, the champ's got a problem. 
Tyrone Tremaine, 701. 314 kilometres an hour. It will be the Black Megabolt Fuels car into the final to take on Chris Soldatus. How about that? 701 in round one. 701 in round two. He goes through the final with uh, lane choice against Soldatus. We have a look at the replay here of Aaron Tremaine. I'm not too sure what's happened there because it looked like a smooth launch. It didn't look like it had shake or anything. Just trying to pick up from the front. On the first or second shift, it just went nowhere. He was off the throttle right at that point. Well, Kerry Tremaine's got one of his boys through to the final. I've got the other half of the final here, uh, Kerry Tremaine, or at least a crew chief on the other half of the final. Uh, made a 7.01 lane choice in the final. It's not going to be easy, though, against Chris Soldatus. No, Chris has been running really well. Like, Pete's definitely got that thing motivated. I think Aaron had a bit of tie shake there, so yeah, they get out of it. But that's drag racing, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Jason's at the other end of the racetrack. He's got another driver with him. Thanks, Rusty. I got the other half of the East Coast Thunder Pro Stock final standing with me here. Tyrone, you're going to the final. Yeah, mate, it's good, but it would have been good to see what happened. What good race would have been better, but I, I don't know what happened out there, but I think it went reasonably good, so let's go and get another one. Well said, mate. Congratulations, and I'll be talking to you later. Thanks, guys. Very confident Tyrone Tremaine will be going into the final against Chris Soldatus. We've had upsets galore right through the East Coast Thunder at Sydney Dragway. Will we see an upset in the final? What's going to happen? That's all to come. It's final time in Pro Stock 400 Thunder Championship Drag Racing. We're at Sydney Dragway for the East Coast Thunder on a warm, warm summer's evening. And it's all come down to these two guys, Tyrone Tremaine from Queensland and Chris Soldatus from Victoria. In the meantime, Rob, let's have a look at how they made their way to the final here in Pro Stock. First round of racing, Tyrone Tremaine took on Bill Petakaris. Yeah, Tyrone. I mean, he was uh, right up in qualifying early, ended up back in fourth, but guess what? Made no mistake of this first round run against Bill Petakaris. Yeah, at that time, it was the low ET of the event as well, that 7.01, which took out Petakaris. In his semi final matchup, though, he had to face his brother. Yeah, they didn't plan it very well, did they? Racing each other in the semi final. Of course, Aaron was the uh, defending champion here in Pro Stock. Tyrone Tremaine finished the season in second place. Tyrone got a little bit loose off the start line there with a bit of wheel spin, but his brother, well, it never got into second gear by the look of it. He re reversed the results from the last time out here in Pro Stock. So Tyrone Tremaine went through to the final here where he was going to, where he's going to take on Chris Soldatus. Soldatus, on the other hand, came up against Bruce Leake in round one came down to Soldatus had the horsepower. Leek had to have a shot at the lights and he did. He grabbed a start line reaction. He was in front and then the horsepower of Soldatus just drove right around him. Leek getting quite bouncy in the braking area. Yeah, it took him through to a semi-final race now against Jody Racco after a big uh, upset win in round one over Wayne Daly. Here he was trying to take out Chris Soldatus, but the power again of Soldatus, their Ridgeway horsepower on board, got another win. Once more, it was Racco with the whole shot, the better reaction time, but the top speed of Soldatus was what scored him a place in the Pro Stock final to take on Tyrone Tremaine. Yeah, Tyrone Tremaine had lane choice here in the final. He's gone here with the lane closest to screen. Oh, 
holding the car in top gear there in the burnout. Plenty of tyre smoke inside the car. Yeah, you can see some great onboard shots there of Chris Aldage. You can see the analog gauges across the dash there. You know, you got the oil pressure, you got your tack guy, you got transmission. And of course, some of the cars now featuring the race pack digital dashes. I know that Aaron Tremaine's got one, but I think this car of uh, Tyrone's is still the similar sort of dial deal. Does it make a difference? Well, not really. It's all just about monitoring what the car's doing. To win this race, it's going to come down to who's got the horsepower and who's got the reaction time. Is, is Soldatus going to give away another hole shot? He's done it in round one, he's done it in round two, but he's had the horsepower to drive around and get the win. In this case, he has got no horsepower advantage. They're absolutely even in the horsepower stakes between Tremaine and Soldatus here. It, this one really literally will come down to pretty much the reaction times here. Both cars have been performing all day right up until this point. Uh, Soldatus, he's got a little bit, you know, a bit to improve on his reaction times if he wants to get around Tyrone Tremaine because he has been sharp. Well, Soldatus is in full stage already. Tyrone's just brought on the pre-stage line. He's got seven seconds now to get into the stage beam. And he hasn't done it. Automatic red light to Tyrone Tremaine. And it will be Soldatus. Oh, double bulbing is not always a popular thing to do. 7 double O for the win for Chris Soldatus. Tyrone Tremaine sits on the start line. I can only feel that Tyrone will be sitting in that car very, very frustrated at this point. Does not look like a happy boy. He's expressing his view. Here's his brother Aaron. Discussion between the uh, the teams. Absolutely not happy of the Tremaines. Tyrone Tremaine blowing up inside the car, but the reality is once he pre-staged, he only had seven seconds to get in, otherwise you get an automatic red light, and that's what happened, Mark. Exactly, when you break it down, like at this point, Tyrone Tremaine can do whatever he wants, but as soon as that top bulb came on, he had seven seconds to get this Brock stock car into stage. And when that didn't happen, the red light comes on his lane, Chris Soldatis gets the automatic win here. Well, it's certainly nothing illegal that Chris Soldatis has done. It's probably not what you'd call common courtesy in pro stock. Normally the guys both go into pre-stage, then they'll bump in one, and one after the other. Uh, double bulbing. We don't know, it could have been an accident. But what we do know, Chris Soldatis wins pro stock eliminator at the East Coast Thunder. And it is going to be a controversy that we're going to hear probably right throughout the season. Jason is down there with our winner now. Yes, I am, guys. I'm here with Chris Soldatus, winner of the East Coast Thunder. That's all yours, Chris. Congratulations. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. Just what a great event. My crew, Peter Ridgeway, everyone that helps me and supports me. I'm really excited. I'm over the world, actually. I don't know what to say. We'll be back. And you got the quickest ET in Pro Stock for the weekend too then, Chris. Yeah, I thought we might have gone a little bit faster than that, but anyway, hey. Eh? Well, regardless of how it happened, for the first time in two seasons, a Tremaine-powered car did not win pro stock. Chris Soldatis leads the championship on 112 from a very fired-up Tyrone Tremaine, Aaron Tremaine, Jody Racco, Wayne Daly, Bill Perticaris, Bruce Leake and Rip Chilton. Been a fantastic opening round of the series. We're heading up to Willowbank Raceway next. For the New Year Thunder, we've got Top Fuel, we've got Pro Slammer, we've got Pro Alcohol, we're going to have Pro Stock, those guys are going to be at it again, Pro Bike, it's all happening at Willowbank on January 5. What about that controversial ending there, Rob? I hope those guys meet up at the next event, Pro Stock. In the meantime, catch us next time with more action from the East Coast Thunder event. We'll see the two wheel terrors of Pro Bike and Top Fuel Motorcycle. See you then.
Coming up after the break, we head to Wakefield Park Raceway for the championship finale of the high-tech drift all-star series for 2018.